The untold truth, why the Shanghai Tower project flopped. Few places in the world have seen a building boom like Shanghai. Its landmark tower, the Shanghai Tower, is considered the crown jewel of China's tall buildings. But since it was finished in 2016, the skyscraper has largely sat empty, facing criticism and concerns. But the big question is, why? Its exterior is made up of over 20,000 pieces of glass, each in a different shape, so it always looks a little bit different depending on the angle you look at it from. But some say that this design is part of the reason why Shanghai Tower became a failed building. How true is that? Join us as we embark on a journey to find out the true cause of Shanghai Tower's failure. But before we begin, if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, kindly do so by clicking on the subscribe icon below. Also, give us a like, share the video, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell for timely updates of our latest uploads. Now, let's get it on. Shanghai Tower has faced a myriad of problems, most notably an astonishingly low occupancy rate. There were several reasons for this. The building's twisting glass facade, ideal for offsetting wind loads, created an impractical floor plate, forcing tenants to pay for large areas of unusable space. The tallest structure in all of China, the Shanghai Tower's height tops off at a dizzying 632 meters above street level, and the Shanghai skyscraper's floors number 128 stories in total. When the building first opened its doors to the public, it also boasted the second fastest vertical transport system in the world, with elevators reaching up to 74 kilometers per hour. The property, which was once a driving range, was cleared for building in 2008. After it had cleared an ecological impact review, a groundbreaking celebration was arranged on the 29th of November 2008. The core of the building was erected floor by floor using a repeating slip forming technique. By the end of December 2011, the substructure of the skyscraper had been finished, and the steel structure had ascended above the 30th story. Cracks started to show in the roadways around the structure's building site in the early weeks of 2012. Ground collapse, as opposed to the load of the structure, was blamed for these cracks, which were most probably a result of extensive groundwater removal in the Shanghai region. On the 3rd of August 2013, building employees installed the structure's last structural beam. With the capping of the Shanghai skyscraper, it will serve as a spectacular reflection of our history, the present moment, and China's unlimited future, stated the project's chief architect. Shanghai Tower Company emphasized the group's desire to supply superior quality corporate and retail space, as well as to add to the grandeur of the city's skyline and the overall functionality of the district. Inside the building, the electrical fitting and interior construction were completed by August 2014, with the facade being finalized shortly after that. However, until June 2017, the skyscraper had difficulty attracting tenants owing to the lack of relevant clearances from the city's fire department which made getting the authorized occupancy certificates impossible. Although around 60% of its commercial space had been occupied, just 30% of those occupants had actually moved in, leaving full stories of the skyscraper vacant. The structure's floor plate had an overall rate of efficiency of just 50% on certain levels, as opposed to 70% for a conventional skyscraper. Since the tower's much-touted outer shell, which brings in natural sunlight and reduces air conditioning expenses, meant that most of the floor space could not actually be utilized. On top of that, massive water leaks occurred on several floors of the building in 2020, causing extensive damage to computer equipment and office spaces. The tower stated that the situation had been resolved and that a thorough investigation of the level where the leak started would be performed. Some Chinese users of social media condemned the leakage, saying it was typical of bad construction practices in the region. Technicians employed a crane to pile plates of steel and erect a 1,200-ton damper toward to the top of the structure to keep it from wobbling in high winds. The damper is computer controlled and encircled by pistons that thrust it in the path of high winds to counteract their effect. During typhoons, the pinnacle of the structure might swing up to five feet without a damper. The structure contains nine cylindrical towers piled on top of one another for a total of 128 levels all enclosed by the interior layers of the tower's facade. Between this layer and the outermost layer, which bends as it ascends, nine zones supply guests with public areas inside Shanghai Tower. Every one of these nine zones features an atrium with cafes, gardens, and commercial spaces, as well as magnificent panoramas of the city. Both tiers of the exterior are transparent, and the structure's base includes retail and entertainment areas. The transparent exterior is an unusual architectural element, since most structures have a single front made 
made of highly reflective glass to prevent the absorption of heat, but the Shanghai building's double-layered glass negates the requirement for either of the layers to be opaque. The skyscraper can host up to 16,000 people each day. The architects drew inspiration from Shanghai's traditional small courtyards, reimagining them inside a spiraling shape. Inside of parks scattered out over the city, the building provides vertically arranged meeting areas. These revolutionary sky gardens distinguish the structure from any other high-rise ever erected. Shanghai Skyscraper offers a novel environment for working and living by prioritizing public spaces and putting stores, cafes, and other commercial facilities on the atrium floors. But despite not reaching the expected occupancy level, you have to appreciate the tower's elevator system. Working together with professionals to construct a high-performance core, the engineers designed a vertical system with four sky lobbies connected by high-speed elevators. Each lobby acts as a social hub for that section of the structure, complete with restaurants and conference facilities. These sky lobbies provide enough facilities that some employees will not feel obligated to exit the skyscraper throughout the workday, saving money on elevator trips and energy resources. Smaller zones are accessed by single elevators all through the structure, while the viewing platform deck at the pinnacle of the building is accessible by three high-speed elevators that go up to 70 kilometers per hour, the fastest speed ever reached in a commercial skyscraper. Three firemen's elevators supplement the high-speed shuttle elevators, considerably increasing passenger flow to the viewing platform during high usage hours. In the case of a fire or other disaster, the shuttles are intended to evacuate people from specially built safety levels, positioned at periodic intervals all throughout the tower. Above all, the 128-story structure aspires to be the planet's greenest high-rise tower. The state hails the structure's LEED Platinum certification as proof of China's expanding sustainability efforts. China's track record on environmentalism has always been dismal. The nation consumes more than 45% of the world's coal resources and is dealing with the consequences of decades of water pollution and excessive deforestation. As a result of the world's most filthy air, which causes up to 4,000 deaths every day, an exceedingly angry public is seeking stronger governmental involvement. Fearing the effects of smog-filled skies and packed roads on societal stability, the state has started forest restoration programs, forced thousands of vehicles off the highways in places like Beijing, and invested heavily in green technologies. China is currently the world's largest renewable energy market, well over double that of the United States. At the top of the Shanghai Tower, 200 wind turbines provide around 10% of the tower's power. These are some of the most visible initiatives, although they are only one component of reducing energy use. The tower gathers rainwater and recycles gray water, has a hybrid heating and cooling system, and employs 40 additional energy-saving techniques that the designers claim reduce its yearly carbon footprint by around 35,000 metric tons. The skyscraper is covered in a double layer of glass for natural air conditioning and ventilation, and the designers claim that a third of the property is green space available to guests, with a total of 24 sky gardens situated between the two layers. At present, everyone is attempting to meet the highest green certification requirements, but only the Shanghai skyscraper has attained LEED Platinum for skyscraper construction. People thought that a structure of this magnitude could not attain such a high level of sustainability. The building may be the only skyscraper to gain LEED Platinum certification, but it is part of a growing trend for skyscrapers to advertise their environmental features as the need for more responsible urban construction grows. But despite its fair share of construction issues, it would still be a fulfilling thing to just visit the Shanghai Tower. After approaching the inner door, the first area provided for guests is known as the introductory room, in which there are images and movies documenting the construction of the building as well as some schematics and models introducing some of the world's highest structures. After touring the display in the introductory room, guests then queue for the high-speed elevators. Visitors can take in the stunning vistas of the metropolis and the magnificent river beneath. Guests can experience a breathtaking view of many historic sites in the city, including the historical sites with various architectural designs all along Bun, as well as the Oriental Pearl Tower, a structure that has for many years been regarded as the symbol of present-day Shanghai. Jin Mao Tower and the Shanghai World Financial Center provide the most stunning views. These two skyscrapers were the highest structures in the region before the construction of Shanghai Tower. Yet now, one can stare down at them. There are several telescopes near the windows, but they are not free. Therefore, you should carry your own. It is advisable to check the weather if you ever plan on visiting, since viewing might be impacted by bad weather. It is preferable to take a trip on a clear day, as clarity will be good. Otherwise, nothing more can be seen but a foggy haze. There you have it, China's tallest building, and all its upsides and downsides. If you ever find yourself in 
in Shanghai, would you consider visiting this tower? Let us know in the comments section below. Also, remember to give us a like, share the video, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell for timely updates of our latest uploads. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thank you for watching.